Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the BJT applications, feedback amplifiers and oscillators. We have this as a module 4 in basic electronics. In the previous video, we studied about one of the BJT application that is as an amplifier. And we studied how the BJT could be used as an I mean, up, um, used as an amplifier there. Now in this video we are going to study about BJ, another application that is BJT as a switch. We refer the textbook for this as D.P. Kothari I.J. Nagarat with the author's name and the textbook name is Basic Electronics Second Edition Macro Hill 2018 and the another textbook is Thomas Hill Floyd Electronic Devices Pearson Education 9th Edition 2012. Now with this introduction, let's start with the actual video. We already know what is a BJT. So BJT is nothing but a bipolar junction transistor and we have two more, I mean uh, we have uh, two kinds of BJT that is PNP and NPN transistors, right? So for the PNP and NPN transistor, we already know a BJT is nothing but a three terminal, three layered and two junction device, right? So three terminals are emitter base and collector and the three layers are it could be either npn or pnp and the two i mean uh, junctions are emitter base junction and the collector base junction now once we look into this we have something called i mean we uh, we have studied bjt uh, the application of bjt as an amplifier now let us study the application of bjt as a switch a transistor is usually used for mainly uh, mainly two purpose one is for the switching operation and the other one is for amplifying operation when it comes for the switching operation we know it should act as either as an open switch either i mean it should be it should have the liability of opening and closing of a circuit the the when we it is a uh, sol, it is a type where solid sw state switching offers significant reliability and it is of low co lower cost when it compare when it is compared with the conventional relays relay switch that we are going to use both the npn transistor and the pnp transistor could be used as a switch the uh, I mean other than this we have some more applications where in which other than this we have some more applications where some more applications which we can use as a may which we can use this bjt that is nothing but we can use this as a power transistor or either as a device i mean either as a switching device at a time uh, it, it may i mean uh, it, it may be necessary uh, it can be used necessarily for using signal level transistors also to drive the high power transitions transistor Now, with this concept, let us study how this BJT is going to work as a switch. We can have a look at here. I mean, uh, we have the transistor. I mean, uh, with an N, I mean, PNP transistor and NPN transistor, both can act as a switch. So, we can take any of them uh, to I mean, understand the concept how the BJT is going to act as a switch. When BJT is used as an electronic switch, it is operated alternatively in cutoff and saturation so cutoff is where no current flows across this and the saturation or the open i mean uh, saturation or the i mean uh, saturation i mean uh, saturation switch is where which is going to act as a closed switch and the current flows like i mean flows across this so this is what is a circuit we have considered so we have a transistor and we have the for the base of the transistor we are connecting one more base resistance which we name it as rp and for the base of the transistor we have connected the input and the emitter is grounded and the collector is connected to plus vcc whenever i make my input whenever i make my input as equal to zero right i can say the base emitter junction is now in the it is look into the polarities of the transistor so base is connected to positive and the emitter is connected to negative so 
Once this is connected, we can say the base emitter junction is now not in the forward biased, I mean forward biased condition. Now, as a result, I can say the current across the color, I mean base is equal to zero. That is, IB current is equal to zero. So this is what it, I am showing here. Whenever, whenever the base emitter junction is not forward biased, correct? When the base emitter junction, we already know there is a condition where we are going to. Um, condition states that whenever the emitter base junction or the base emitter junction is forward biased then only the transistor is going to conduct or it is going to act as a switch right so when i mean it is going to act as a closed switch so when i say my base junction or base emitter junction is not forward biased i can say the current across the base is equal to zero and as a result i can say my collector current ic is also equal to zero as a result vce that is the collector emitter junction the collector emitter voltage vce is now in the cutoff region that is it is going to act as a open switch which is shown here which is my transistor is going to act as a open switch no current flows across the transistor so this is one of the i mean this is one case let me go for the second case where i am going to keep where i am going to provide or where i am going to make my emitter base junction as forward biased and my collector base junction or also forward where both of them i'm making it as a forward biased condition now once this is forward biased i can say my collector current is going to flow across this transistor right that is my sorry not collector current it is a base current ib so my base current is going to flow across the transistor right i mean how since there is a flow of base current across the transistor i can say the transistor is now in the closed or I mean uh, it is going to act as a closed switch which is as shown here in the diagram so it is going to act as a closed switch and there is a flow of current across this now the base current is kept sufficiently large enough to make the collector current to reach its saturation value right so which is represented by ic sat so reach its saturation value so as a result it is ic sat in this condition in this condition we can state our vce that is collector to emitter voltage is equal to vce e sat vce e sat that is in this condition we can state that our vce emitter collector to emitter voltage is equal to vce e vce sat that is saturation which is equal to zero so i can say this is a short circuit there will be flow of current so under cutoff condition i can say my vc vce cutoff would be equal to vcc so whatever the voltage that i am going to get across vcc that is the voltage so under saturation region under saturation region just a second so under saturation region what is going to happen here is i can say my ic sat my ic sat that is current collector current at the saturation region is given by vcc minus vce saturation divided by rc right and we know our vce saturation is equal to zero so as a result my ic sat would be equal to vce sat vcc divided by rc right the minimum value of base current needed to keep the transistor in saturation is that is in order to keep the I mean uh, base current i mean in order to keep the transistor in saturation region there should be a minimum requirement of current for the base uh, minimum requirement of base current that is given by ib min equal to ic sat divided by beta dc right so this is what so ib must be made significantly greater than ib min to keep the transistor in saturation region that is the condition to make the transistor to be in the saturation region is my ib should be much much greater than ib min then only i we can say our transistor is in the saturation region right so with the concept of 
mean uh, cut off and saturation let us have a look at the on and off of an led so how the transistor switch circuit is going to act as i mean uh, is going to mean u is going to be used for the transistor switch on or off of an led one of the most fundamental application of a transistor is using it to control the flow of power to another part of the circuit and uh, using uh, it as an electrical that is nothing but using it as an electrical switch we already know our electrical switch is nothing but on and off right so driving it in either cut off or the saturation mode the transistor can create the binary on current right so one of the most uh, fundamental application is we are going to use the transistor circuit to be on or off of an led that is i mean switch on or on uh, switch off the led so when we have a look at this so driving it in either cut off or saturation mode the transistor can create the binary on or off circuit right so we we, uh, we can have a look at this we have a i mean uh, on and off conditions and we have an led connected to the transistor so the circuit consists of we have the collector current where we have the collector resistance to that we are connecting an led along with the transistor where the emitter is going to get grounded and we have the base resistance and for the base resistance we are going to get the input now what is going to happen here is whenever the transistor switches can be used to switch and control the lamps relays or even motors when using the bipolar transistor as a switch they must either be uh, they must be either fully off or it should be fully on now with this concept transistors that are fully on are said to be in their saturation region and the transistors that are fully off are said to be in the cut off region now when we look into the circuit when we look into the circuit when we look into the circuit the input is a square wave correct the input is a square wave the input is a square wave which is as shown here when the square wave is at 0 volt when the square wave is at 0 volt the transistor would be in the cut off region and there is no collector current so the led will not glow right or it will not emit any light when the square wave goes to high that is when it is going to have a transition from 0 to 1 right when the square wave is going to have a transition that to the high level now the transistor reaches the saturation that is and uh, the transistor saturates this forward biases the led that is connected to the transistor led that is connected to the trans forward bias is that led and the resulting current through the led causes it to emit the light thus we can say a blinking led that is on when we in is high that is the input when we make our input voltage as high i can say my led is going to blink and whenever when when my input is equal to 0 i can say my led is going to be off which is i mean is off so this is how the working principle of your led right when we connect a lamp here now when we connect a lamp we have the transistors connected here and we have the input whenever whenever the input is low that is when my input v in is equal to 0 i can say my transistor is now in the cut off mean cut off region now as a result there will be no flow of current and the bulb that is the lamp which is connected here will not glow when the when there is a transition from 0 to 1 i can say my transistor is now in the uh, con i mean uh, conducting region or it is in the it reach i mean the transistor saturates and as a result there is a flow of current which is going to in turn turn on the lamp which is connected in this circuit so this is how the transistor can be used as a switch Uh, you yeah, uh, used as a switch to switch on the led or off the led now these are all the few uh, these are all the few i mean resources which we went through for which we went through for this uh, explanation hope this video is useful and beneficiary for you thank you for watching